Um, just a quick intro about what depth studies are. Depth studies are just like mini research tasks that you do. Though it doesn't seem mini, it is it's not relatively that, um, it shouldn't be that complex. Um, you do one depth study in your prelim year, another in your HSC year. Um, look, the, the way that the school is going to test is just going to really change. But they're not going to make it... Um, Actually, no, I take that back. They may make it outside of the syllabus because I've seen one school do it. Um, but my school didn't do it outside of the syllabus. So hopefully you guys are fine. I did crystals, by the way, for anyone who wants to know. I made crystals, um, which is not really covered in the syllabus. But yeah, it's a bit weird. Um, depth studies just relate to the working scientifically aspect of the syllabus. You may have seen it and... You know, whenever I see, I just think of it as junk of the syllabus, but um, it's kind of important. So, um, yeah, if if you find them confusing or difficult, um, you know, just because it's really absurd, there's no specific set way to do it. Um, just make sure you understand how it's like um, in year 11, because in year 12, um, it's going to be important. Um, sometimes the schools may let you choose a topic, but just choose topics that are, um, you know, doable. Don't like choose something really niche, um, and choose an experiment that's easy to, easy to be controlled, only has one independent variable. You don't need multiple independent variables. We don't do that in, um, year 11. Generally, this is what the structure of your report is going to be like. So it's going to be with a title, a name, hypothesis, um, and inside your method, you include things such as, um, you know, measurements, your variables, the materials that you use. You'll also have a separate section for risk assessment. And then um, you also have things such as your results and your discussion. Discussion just pretty much explores the trend that has occurred, why it happens, um, looking at the different variables, so uh, things such as like validity, reliability, accuracy, and then finally you wrap it up with a conclusion that just pretty much um, tells whether you've not whether or not you've served your aim. So it hasn't met your aim or not, in essence. So yeah, and in terms of writing an aim or a hypothesis, the aim is pretty much what you're trying to figure out. So. In an, in an example like this, it's pretty much whether or not salt water or pure water freezes at a faster rate. Um, and for hypothesis, it's pretty much linking um, one variable to another. So how, how the um, syllabus has kind of changed is that, note this down by the way, whoever um, is watching this lecture, you actually do need to provide a reason. I don't know why it says do not. Um, you do need to provide a reason to support your hypothesis. Um, so it'll be something like linking one variable to another with, with a reason. So I'm just thinking of an example. Um, something like methane has a lower boiling point than water because methane only has dispersion forces whereas water has all the different intermolecular forces and therefore has stronger intermolecular bonding. That's like a hypothesis you would um, write. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, but yeah, you need to link one variable to another, follow up with the reason. Um, and in terms of variables, you just need to be explicit what your variables are. So you need to have one independent, one dependent, rest of the variables are controlled. So this is things such as volume of water, the temperature, the environment you're carrying it out in. Um, I'm just trying to think. Um, the type of salt you're using. So like salt can be like sodium chloride, but it can also be something like potassium chloride. Um, so, you know, make sure it's the correct chemical formula and the same chemical formula, things like that. And also ensure that you state the, um, amounts that you're using as well for materials. So 
the um you know substance that you're using followed by the um amount and also if it's like a beaker or like a pipette or measuring cylinder or whatever make sure you specify the volume it has risk assessment is a bit different for every school my school did like this online risk assessment thing whatever that is um but i remember we used to do it in um uh prax but i think for our assessments we did like just like a normal risk assessment on paper um we just explored what risks there are so for example you know if you have if you're using acid obviously you know you might get burns right or if you're using a heating plate um then you know you might get burns um things like that um and you need to explore what the risk is um how it might cause harm how can you prevent it and how would you deal with it if they occur these are the four points you need to explore um and you also need to be doing results and discussions so for results it's typically just graphing it um you know tabulating it using charts whatever you want to do make sure everything is labeled with a figure um so a figure label so for example figure one um maybe line graph showing different boiling points something like that um so that it's easy to refer in your discussion um and discussion is typically the most difficult section so you need to make sure that you um refer you you need to ensure that it's concise and ensure that you're only referring to your experiments so analyze your results do they support the hypothesis have you explored validity reliability and accuracy you know have you had any flaws within your method and if you do have any flaws how can you improve that next time and how will that affect your validity reliability and accuracy so it's really like analyzing your results looking at your flaws and looking at how you can improve them um and conclusion pretty much just refers to your hypothesis really and aim as well um it should not be more than one or two lines so yeah.